I am the Children's System of Care Administrator for Aetna Better Health of Kentucky. I do want to remind everybody that this training is being recorded and will be uploaded to Kentucky Autism Training Center YouTube channel. Um, I am happy today to say that um, we have a great uh, presentation, and um, but I wanted to go over a few housekeeping tools with you guys. So again, everybody, if you all can stay on mute, um, and then if you do have questions, if you can just please put them in the chat, um, and we will do our best to get to those before the end of the presentation. Um, also wanted to let you know that we do have an evaluation that will need to be completed, especially if you would like to get CEU credits. I will be putting the link to that in the chat towards the end of the training, and it is a Google Drive. So if you have trouble opening the link, um, you will need to hand write down um, the evaluation link and find another device um, that can open it. Um, and the same goes uh, for the training. Um, we are there's going to be a bit.ly um, link that's also going to be provided to you all in the chat that will have the PowerPoint as well as resources um, for you all to take with you after this training. Um, that may be another one that you all have to hand write and use another device to open um, if your agency has some Google Drive firewalls like Aetna does. So um, with all that being said, I think that's everything. Again, make sure you're on mute when you join. And um, I am happy to um, have Heather Alger here, um, who is a field training coordinator with the Kentucky Autism Training Center. And Heather is going to talk about communication and embedding low tech AAC tools into everyday opportunities. So thank you, Heather, you can get started. Thank you. Welcome uh, to the communication and autism focused training provided by the Kentucky Autism Training Center. I'm Heather Page Alger, a speech language pathologist, and I'm certified by the American Speech Language Hearing Association known as ASHA. I serve as a field training coordinator for the Kentucky Autism Training Center. <clears throat> Hold on just a moment here. Ms. Andrea, it is not advancing to the next slide. <clears throat> OK. Um, and it's on slideshow. Should be, yes. Um, if you want, I do have a copy of the training. I mean, would you want me to put that up? Um, Unless Heather or Heidi has any other ideas. May I just refresh the training maybe? Yeah, give that a try. OK. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, for your grace as we work through these tech issues. OK, hold on just one moment. <clears throat> Oh, we're back now. Thank you. I think it Yay, just. Yay. Good. Yes. Okay. Sorry <laughs> Thank about you. that, folks. No okay. worries. It wouldn't be a virtual training without something. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, in continuing, um, so the Kentucky Autism Training Center serves all of Kentucky with the mission to strengthen our state's systems of support for uh, persons affected by autism. We bridge the gap between research and practice via providing training and resources. We are committed to improving the quality of life for those affected by ASD. The Kentucky Autism Training Center develops, coordinates, and directly models practices with programs for promoting the education of autistic students. We partner with other agencies and groups, including the regional educational cooperatives to provide training and coaching of educators and other service providers 
for providing high quality services for autistic people. The Kentucky Autism Training Center promotes the use of research-based practices by training practitioners of various disciplines in building statewide capacity for high quality services across the lifespan for autistic people. The title of this presentation, Communication, Low Tech Tools Embedded into Everyday Opportunities, will target these areas. Identifying examples of low tech communication tools and ways to integrate the use of those tools in various settings, including the home or clinical therapy settings and applying strategies to support language development using low tech communication tools. The overall goal of this presentation is to provide examples of easy to make, think homemade using common items found in the home or an even an office setting and use those low tech communication tools that can be created quickly and relatively cost free. <clears throat> the participants will have access to today's presentation using the QR code. There's also a bit.ly there. Additional resources will be available within the QR code. Just use your camera uh, to uh, direct it to the QR code to access that information. Just a note before we begin the actual presentation, persons with autism may be referred to in this presentation using person first language, such as a child with autism or identity first language, such as autistic child to accommodate differences in individual preferences. Now let's get to the heart of the training. Communication, understanding a message, conveying a message using verbal, speaking, or nonverbal communication. For example, eye contact, body language, written language, like a text message to express yourself. Think about the ease in which we communicate with each other how we read or interpret the message from the communication partner. Now think about how our lives would be impacted if our communic communication abilities are interrupted or delayed. Think about how your day would be different if you are misunderstood by your communication partner without the ability or a method for repairing the misunderstanding, the miscommunication. Think about how frustrated you would become if you could not communicate your wants, needs, feelings, thoughts. These are the communication challenges faced by autistic people daily. Let's set the stage in our presentation by delving into the diagnostic criteria for autism. Just what is Autism Spectrum Disorder or ASD? As defined by the American Psychiatric Association Desk Reference Manual known as the DSM-5, ASD is a neurological disorder, meaning that the disorder affects the brain. There are three deficit social communication characteristics associated with autism. First, social interactions with others are deficient. One may notice that the conversational turn taking or the natural back and forth flow to a conversation is affected. Second, nonverbal communication is impacted. Lack of eye contact and deficits in understanding and the use of gestures, along with the lack of facial expression and or nonverbal communication is seen. Third, deficits in developing, maintaining and understanding relationships 
are exhibited such as play behaviors, including imaginative play and making friends with the absence of interest in peers. In addition, two out of four additional criteria are included in the diagnosis of autism. Restricted, repetitive behaviors, insistence on sameness, inflexible adherence to routines or ritualized patterns of verbal or nonverbal behavior, highly restricted, fixated interests that are abnormal in intensity or focus, and or a hyper or hypo reactivity to sensory input or unusual interest in sensory aspects of the environment. So what does communication include? For what purposes do we communicate? Communication has numerous purposes, which include our need to request, which is communicating to gain access to an object, person, or activity. One may say, I want cake, or the child points to a cake to make the request. Refuse, communicating to refuse or reject an object or person, or comply with a direction, or participate in an activity. An example of refusal is saying, no chocolate cake for me, or showing non-verbally by shaking of our head, indicating no when presented the chocolate cake, that we do not want the chocolate cake. One also uses communication to express our feelings or emotion. Keep in mind these communicative functions as we progress through the presentation since this information will help to guide you as you think about low tech communication tool creation. These are some of the communicative functions that can be targeted when helping the autistic person to communicate using low tech tools. Let's review how children acquire language and use language. Language acquisition begins in infancy with the child's cries, the baby's cries to get needs met, for example. Those cries communicate that the baby needs something or that the infant is not comfortable. The caregiver responds to those cries in order to determine the infant's need. Then as the infant develops and refines the communication system, the cries progress to coos, Facial expressions such as frowns or smiles, pointing or gesturing, and eye gazing at a desired object or person. Then the baby will build upon the communication attempts by adding the ability to say parts of words such as E for eat. Then uh, first words and phrases follow. A baby will typically start saying the first words around age one. A medical professional, such as the child's doctor, will usually ask about the emergence of first words at the one-year checkup for that child and may inquire further about language development as the child's sentence usage and combinations of those sentences uh, progress at the subsequent checkups as the child ages. Now let's discuss non-typical language acquisition and the expression of needs and wants, requests and refusals. When the typical sequence of language development fails to develop, deviates or is interrupted, then a child may act out to communicate. The child may lack the words or nonverbal communication to express the wants and needs, which may be seen in children with autism. The children or the child may scream, sit down on the floor to indicate refusal, throw items, grab, kick, run, or squeeze. 
the child may also laugh, which may be another unexpected form of communication that doesn't match the situation or event. As the communication continues in a breakdown or failure for the autistic person to communicate a want, need, refusal, or expression of feeling and emotion, then the unexpected observable outward displays of typical communication can escalate. The communication partner or the person trying to interpret the message cannot understand or interpret what the child is attempting to communicate. The low tech communication tool could be a targeted intervention in assisting the autistic person in using a system that he, she, or they understand and that the communication partner will understand. These atypical or non-standard ways of communication are misunderstood. Okay, I'm in. Are misunderstood by the communica communication partner. The autistic person may lack the typical or expected vocabulary word within his or her uh, communication repertoire. In these instances, the low tech communication tool could be utilized to assist the autistic person with understanding and applying an object, picture, or word to replace the atypical display of language expression. The low tech tool could become part of the communication intervention and used by those communication partners within the autistic person's environment. <clears throat> It is especially noteworthy to understand that every action or behavior is a communication attempt. Again, every action or behavior displayed by a child is a communication attempt. Consider the previous slides depicting some of the atypical communication behaviors, such as kicking, that may be observed which may be the method of communication. It's a behavior or an action. Remember earlier in the presentation, we reviewed how infants communicate via actions and behaviors, such as crying or cooing, until the communication system advances and develops. Once we understand ways to aid the child's expression, then we can help the child use tools such as low tech communication tools to assist in language understanding and expression. Those requests, refusals, and expression of feelings or emotions. Sometimes autistic individuals need an alternative method for communicating instead of speech. In these instances, augmentative and alternative communication may be necessary. AAC, the abbreviated term for augmentative and alternative communication, involves all of the ways that someone communicates besides talking or speech. Augmentative means to add to someone's speech. Alternative means to be used instead of speech. Speech language pathologists who have extensive knowledge about communication skills and especially augmentative and alternative communication should be consulted to offer more information regarding augmentative and alternative communication, AAC. Look for a speech language pathologist that is certified by ASHA that is searchable in ASHA's online database. A speech language pathologist may recommend a communication evaluation, for instance, if there's concerns about a child's language development. Low tech communication tools fall within the category of AAC. Augmentative and alternative communication is included in the evidence based practices 
noted by the National Clearinghouse on Autism Evidence and Practice, the NCAEP. The NCAEP has identified 28 research-based practices that have demonstrated the best current methods for assessment and intervention for autism. The evidence-based practice of AAC would include low-tech communication tools for assisting with communication deficits in autism, which is our focus of this presentation. Also, please note the highlighted visual supports evidence-based practice within the list, which is an important component or piece of a low-tech communication tool. We will highlight the use of visual supports as part of a low-tech communication tool within this presentation as well. So how do we as caregivers and others, uh, professionals that interact with autistic individuals, bridge the gap in communication? We can use augmentative and alternative communication. We can utilize low-tech communication tools. So what are low-tech communication tools? Low-tech communication tools and aids are any type of communication method that is not electronic, but does require some sort of equipment outside one's body. Depending upon the person's level of understanding and expressing language, types of low-tech communication uh, tools may include objects, pictures, photographs, pen paper, picture communication boards, or symbol usage. The low-tech part is that these communication aids do not require batteries nor electricity. These aids can be handmade. These low-tech aids do not need power or recharging. Low-tech communication aids can be carried easily from place to place within the settings. Low-tech AAC tools are simple communication aids that do not need the batteries or electronics. There's no chips to operate. These are typically lightweight and easy to transport aids for communication. These communication aids can include letters, words, phrases, pictures or symbols on a board or in a book. With low-tech communication tools, the individual can access the object or picture, for example, by simply picking up the object or picture and presenting it to the communication partner. These tools can also be accessed by the individual pointing to the picture, for instance. Sometimes the autistic person will use eye gaze or look to indicate the picture that the individual is referencing. Please note that the person using the low-tech communication tool needs a communication partner since these devices do not generate speech. So in other words, the autistic individual will be using the low-tech aid to communicate with another communication partner such as a family member, a peer, a community member, a medical professional, and so forth. In this overview video, which is coming up next, the presenter informs about different types of AAC devices, the low-tech tools mentioned, such as the picture visuals, are the tools that we are concentrating on today. The picture visuals are the low-tech communication. The following video will provide reasons for using AAC tools 
and providing access to those AAC tools. Communication is crucial to our everyday lives. We use it to share feelings, stories, ideas, to make friends and to get our needs met. We began to communicate right from the moment we were born. Communication isn't just speech. We all use gestures, body language, visuals and texts to communicate every day. Communication is about understanding and being understood by others. Some people may need systems or devices to help them communicate. This is known as Augmentative and Alternative Communication, or AAC for short. AAC can be many different things and can do lots of different jobs for people. Sally might need an iPad to talk for her while Bob needs some picture visuals to help him understand what he needs to do. It's a speech and language therapist's job to work with people to come up with the best AAC solution for their needs. Here are some of the ways AAC is useful. Spoken words are only temporary. AAC provides people with a concrete and permanent visual so they have longer to process information and formulate a response. AAC increases a person's ability to engage with their peers in social situations and to initiate conversations. AAC has been proven to support the natural development of speech and language. Communicating with someone in a way that they can understand opens a door to their beautiful mind. When a person first gets a new piece of AAC, it can seem a little strange and overwhelming. If their family and friends try to use the device as well, it can help it to seem less scary. When you're learning a new language, you need lots of repetitions. It's the same with AAC. People need lots of repetitions often to help them learn how to use it. AAC becomes a person's voice and therefore always needs to be accessible to them. Augmentative and alternative communication ensures that everyone has the opportunity to understand and to be understood, no matter what their challenges are. If you would like to know more about AAC, speak to your speech and language therapist and they will be able to help you out. Communication is crucial. In referencing the previous slide regarding the 28 evidence-based practices and reflecting on intervention strategies, research indicates that using visual supports increases communication understanding and usage. Autistic persons tend to respond better to information presented visually, such as pictures, rather than just hearing information presented alone. The visual support is a concrete form of information that can be referred to repeatedly, as opposed to the spoken information that, that disappears. Visual supports like pictures help to cue the autistic individual that an event is beginning, ending, or finished, and these visuals are key in creating low-tech communication tools. Visual supports also increase an autistic individual's independence in using a communication tool. Did you realize that we use visual supports, words, pictures, within our daily lives? Think about the various pictures, such as the ones depicted in these slides, that help us to navigate our surroundings. We use communication abilities to interpret the messages. The first picture aids the rider on the train in predicting and knowing the upcoming stops. Thus, this is a written stop schedule and it helps the rider to prepare and relieve the unknown 
of the train suddenly stopping at the point that the rider wanted to exit. The schedule is a built-in visual support representation showing beginning and an ending of an activity. We use these types of words and symbols to interpret our surroundings. Our language understanding is aided by the use of these types of written pictorial tools. These are additional pictures that one may encounter that show the power of pictures and or words or the combination in conveying a message and in helping us to understand the message. Consider that if one had no previous knowledge of the words ground transportation, how that impact of the pictures of the car and the bus that are beside of the ground, ground transportation sign would aid in our understanding and interpretation of the message. This correlation or connection helps when a low tech communication tool is created for a person in the autism community who may experiencing difficulties with understanding and conveying messages. These are examples of low tech tools using pictures and words. There are no batteries or electrical parts to consider. In continuing to acknowledge how we use words and pictures already, which are sometimes a higher tech tool or a low tech communication tool, then think about how we use menus at a restaurant. In most instances, the restaurant is the restaurant menu is simply comprised of words and pictures on a sturdy material, which is sometimes laminated. We use the menus or those low tech tools to make a choice and help communicate our choice to the restaurant. The same concept applies to choosing items, people or activities using a low tech communication tool. The picture on the right shows how these pictures can be used for communication purposes, such as choice making. In this example, the choices may re be referring to items or activities that the individual with autism can request, which in turn, it reinforces the communication attempt and the usage of the low tech tool. The laminated pictures have Velcro on the back on the back side so that the picture can be moved and reused multiple times. Pictures or words do not always need to be laminated. That's not a requirement since many of these tools are homemade. However, any clear see-through window items such as a photo album, it does provide a place to put the pictures or the words. The photos and or words would last longer if they're protected by lamination or within a protective type of sleeve. These frames show pictures of other types of low tech communication tools, such as the picture showing the person indicating a pretzel request. Also pictures indicating that an activity is all done are shown. The bottom right board shows the larger picture indicating that this board is for request. This is an example of using short sentences such as I want to expand the child's expressive language. If the child chooses the picture of the board of the book, then the, the communication partner can say book and then say, I want book to expand the child's utterance. The commu communication is immediately rewarded and reinforced since the communication partner could read the child's favorite book to the child or give the book to the child. It's very important to remember the communication attempt needs to be acted upon so that the child receives communication skills practice and that the child learns the cause and effect of I point to this or I give this picture and I obtain this item. Communication that is aided by these low tech tools helps the child to have some control or choice in life activities instead of all choices being made for the autistic individual. These are some additional examples of 
pictures that could be used as low tech tools for communication purposes. A low tech communication tool can be a single picture. Low tech communication tools do not need to be complicated. Rather, the opposite is true for the autistic child. If the child's language understanding and usage is at the single word level, then one picture or word would be appropriate to begin targeting communication effectiveness. As mentioned previously, a speech language pathologist should be consulted regarding recommendations for types of low tech communication tools that can be created, whether these low tech tools are using objects or written words. The written words are exclusively at the higher level of language understanding and usage. In addition, a mixture of objects, pictures or words along with the verbalizations or the child's own utterances could be used. Each low tech tool is created with the individual's needs in mind. Look closely at the picture of the lanyard style low tech AAC tool. This picture highlights the portability of low tech AAC tools, since many times the low tech AAC tools are handmade. Now that we have reviewed some examples of low tech AAC tools, let's take a look at this brief video with tips about creating low tech AAC tools. Notice the clever usage of cardboard paper and actual food wrappers in the example. Good morning, everyone. It's really nice to see you all again. I hope you're all staying healthy and safe at home. Um, I wanted to share some tips today on low tech AAC. I work in early intervention sometimes, and one of the most common things when I uh, go into families' homes is that they often ask um, for really specific ways to help their children communicate. It's usually that when their child cries, they know that the child is hungry and now they're like rifling through the cabinet and the refrigerator and pulling out a million things trying to figure out what it is the child wants. Um, and as we get talking, usually there's really like a handful of items that are the favorite items. Um, so I wanted to share a tip that I share with some of my families. This is a low tech um, option that you guys could probably implement this week if you want it. Uh, I often recommend you can take pictures and print them out if you have a printer of favorite foods, but I know that that's not a feasible option for um, some families. So one of the other things I recommend is when you're done with a uh, food, just cut out the box or keep the bag. And I literally took a box um, from Amazon this week and I just stapled them. This one I needed to tape down a little bit to the box. So if you have a stapler, if you have tape and if you have a box, you should be good to go with making a low tech system. Um, you can see that I eat like a child, that I have chicken nuggets, M&Ms, mac and cheese, pasta, um, the Skippy for peanut butter and jelly. But you can have this sitting in the kitchen. Um, and then when your child is hungry, you can ask them, okay, well, what do you want? And maybe they can point to it. This might be even a little bit easier because if your child isn't pointing yet, they can use their whole hand. Um, to reach for what they want. So that's one idea. Um, alternatively, you could not cut these out. Um, once they're empty, you could clean them if they're a bag or if they're a box, just um, maybe tape the lid back together. And you could keep the whole boxes in a box. And then um, when your child wants something, you just open the box and they rifle through the box and they pick out the bag of M&Ms and you know, okay, go to the cabinet and get M&Ms for them. Um, if your child already has an AAC system, of course you hopefully have these things programmed into their system. But I know a lot of my kids, we were in the middle of trialing stuff or we have looked at a high tech device, but it hasn't come yet. And now we're kind of stuck with um, nothing and we're just kind of coming up with options. Um, another option would be that you could use objects to represent items. Um, I want to be clear, there's no hierarchy for AAC. You don't need to use objects and then use photographs and then use a high tech device. Um, but I know that everyone's home and we're home for 
probably a little bit longer um, and you might really need something to put in place. And these are things that are usually around the house and easy to find. Um, so for example, I have a, my mom put something for Christmas in this box. So I had the box still laying around. Um, it was a good one because it had an easy open lid. You could use any box that's around the house. Um, so in my box, I put a fork, and I might use the fork to represent that I want to eat. Um, I have a cup for when I want water. Um, I don't drink juice boxes, so I have a Coke for myself, but you could put a juice box in for your child. I would do an empty juice box because otherwise they're just going to take the juice box and drink it right away. Um, and I really like to read as I'm uh, a little bit bored in this quarantine, so I put in a book that I could use to represent that I want to read. It's important to remember that just putting this fork in the cup and the juice box in the box doesn't necessarily mean your child knows that they can then give it to you. Um, you're going to have to practice teaching them what to do. So maybe you, every time you're about to sit down for a meal time, you take your box with you to the kitchen, you pull out the fork and give it to your child, then have the child hand it over to you. Oh, okay, yeah, it's time to eat, you're right, and then you start the mealtime process. Um, so you have to teach them how to use the objects as a symbol, um, but that's another, again, low-tech option, and you're likely to have that stuff around your house because it's going to be things that you know your child wants to, to request. Um, if they do, a little tip, if they do pick book, um, I, you might, maybe this is their favorite book and that's why you put it in. I don't know that I would do the favorite book. Um, I would then, once they did that and gave it to me, I would offer some different choices of things we can read. So, okay, do you want to read No More Naps or do you want to read The Pow Pow Fish and let them choose that way? Um, you can also, if you have a printer, um, PRC and Satillo. I only have the PRC ones printed with me here, um, but they have low tech manual boards that you can just go online and print out. Um, they have some masked versions too. So they're in different sizes and they also have them available in Spanish. Um, so like I said, PRC and Satillo have them on their websites. You can go and you can print them and use them. I also have my um, Pixon board here behind me. You can print out Pixon uh, communication boards. I think this one is a 65 and I have some extra, um, let's see if I can bring this closer. I have some extra vocabulary here at the top of things, favorite songs, um, other actions that we like to do, clothing, colors, etc., and craft stuff. Um, so you can, oh, here's all my favorite books. So you can do something like that as well and print it. I had a binding machine at school, but you could also just put hole punches in. And if you have binder clips, you could use binder clips. Um, I've used, uh, yarn um when i didn't have any binder clips and i just tied it together with yarn and it'll hold up not indefinitely but for now um so those are my ideas on low tech aac i hope they were helpful for you guys please feel free to contact me if you have any questions thanks stay safe and healthy good morning everyone it's really nice to see you all again these are uh, these photos depict uh, the modeling and practicing of using pictures as part of a low tech communication tool. The picture show uh, the picture series shows how to model the language request. The child would give the picture of the orange to the communication partner. The communication partner would give the requested orange to the child. Again, the child would give the picture of the orange to the communication partner and the communication partner would then give the requested orange to the child. One of the keys to success when creating and, and using a low tech communication tool is to consider the child's preferences. Offer opportunities to make choices. Follow through with the child's choice or request immediately as the child is learning to use low tech communication tools. By delaying or not acting upon the child's request, the child may continue to act out as a form of communication instead of using the low-tech communication tool. 
The child needs multiple experiences that provide that using the mutually understood low tech communication tool does indeed allow for needs to be met, uh, expression of feelings or rejecting of items. These are examples of quickly and easily created low tech communication tools created using an index card and an empty photo album. The pictures in the photo album can be easily uh, changed while the photo album is portable from uh, place to place within the child's setting. Now let's set the stage for learning some very basic tips about modeling with an AAC tool. Just how do we begin to teach a child how to use the tool? So the aim of this next video is to provide some basic tips about how to model use of an AAC tool like a low tech communication tool, uh, such as pictures. The low tech communication tools are the communication book and symbols that are mentioned. Hey, Heather, um, I am sorry. I don't think we can hear it. The video. This might be a video that individuals will need to watch whenever they have um, the link in the presentation because the audio is not working for us today. Always pair the spoken word with the object or picture. For instance, when the child may need help with an activity such as putting on a coat, then ask need help, then say help as you point to the picture of help. Keep your verbal responses simple. Assist the child with pointing to the picture of help or handing the picture of help to you if the child does not respond or appears to be confused. Use this same sequence of modeling to offer many opportunities during the child's everyday routines for practicing asking for help. Everyday routines or activities could include putting the straw into the juice box at mealtime, 
buckling the seat belt in the car, obtaining an item that may be out of the child's reach, such as the child's backpack, turning the page during story time, or turning on the child's favorite music. Bargaining communication understanding with low-tech communication tools always involves patience and wait time. Always provide a short wait period for the child to point to the object or picture independently. For example, before assisting the child with hand over hand pointing or selection, keep in mind that this is dependent upon the child's level, level of language understanding and usage. Expand upon the child's vocalization attempts. For autistic children who are first time users of a low tech communication tool, keep in mind that less is sometimes more, which means a low tech communication board or booklet that has one picture or just a few pictures, such as one to two pictures, may be the level that is appropriate in this stage of the child's development. Loading a low tech communication board with many pictures that have not been trained or practiced will only lead to further frustration for the autistic child. Add or change up the level, such as going from two words to maybe three words as the child uses the board more frequently and shows success with the communication attempts. Always verbally say the name of the item or the emotion picture or the word, which is pairing the picture word with your verbalization. For instance, the communication partner would say model the words pretzel. Get the pretzels, please. It is not required that the autistic individual say the words. Do not insist the autistic individual say the word. The goal is to assist the autistic individual with overall communication. Consult with a speech language pathologist regarding recommendations for spoken language development. Communication opportunities are available every day to practice and model using low tech communication tools. Here's a few examples of when a low tech communication tool could be used. For instance, at mealtime, this is such a rewarding time since food is actually a natural reinforcer. The child could request a snack. Bath time is another example of an opportunity when lots of language understanding and usage is occurring. The low tech tool could be used to request bubbles or help signal that bath time is getting ready to be finished. Another real world opportunity may be the feeding or care of a pet. The picture of the pet or showing the pet's name uh, on the low tech tool, along with a simple drawing of a picture uh, of the dog. And, and that's if the family has a dog or maybe a, a friend has a dog, would model the usage of the low tech communication tool. Still other examples of opportunities and situations to possibly include usage of a low tech communication board include car rides. Use a picture to help the child associate that the family is going to the car. Grocery shopping, use objects, pictures, or a low tech communication booklet to label and help the child identify the foods that are being bought, such as a picture of an apple. The child could even select if they would prefer a green apple or a red apple, for example. More experience with language practice and usage could include using pictures or photographs of community members or particular places or settings to help the autistic individual identify and prepare for visits with teachers doctors, nurses, medical professionals, and or friends. The low tech AAC cards can help in signaling that the event is about to happen or to end. Family members and pictures of family members are great motivators for practicing using a low tech communication tool. The child could request to talk to the family member or maybe even use FaceTime along with the caregiver's help to reward and reinforce the child's communication practice. 
these types of interactions can be very rewarding for the child. Family members and pictures of family members are a great motivator for practicing uh, with the low tech communication tool. The child uh, could also uh, play a request to play a fun game in person with a child or join in a play activity with the child's uh, favorite activity, which these are extremely motivating activities to request uh, by the person with autism. And in turn, these types of opportunities reinforce that communicating using the low tech AAC tool with or without the child's verbalizations attempt to accompany it. Uh, it does not, it, it does indeed get results for the autistic person who's experiencing frustration when attempting to communicate. The success of using the low tech communication tool should lead to further successes with communication. Language development is occurring every day, all throughout the day. So to build upon the child's usage of low tech communication tools, help the child to practice the tool and carry over the skills to include various people, situations, locations, times of day. When the autistic person becomes successful in a setting, then attempting to carry over the skill to a new communication partner or within a different location could be tried. And this can be a, a challenging aspect of communication development for autistic persons. Here's some tips for professionals and families. Families should consult with their child phys child's physician and teachers regarding concerns about their child's language development and or need for referral for a speech language therapy evaluation or services. Mental health professionals should ask the parents of a child with autism if the child is receiving speech language therapy services. Medical professionals should ask families about current status or the method of supports that are that caregivers are successfully using at home. Then both the families and the professionals could utilize the same or similar low tech communication tools or supports during the interactions of the therapy office visits uh, to, facilitate, to, to facilitate further communication practice. Professionals can prepare their office or therapy setting before an autistic individual's visit with possibly reinforcing uh, those reinforcing or motivating items based upon their prior consultation with the family. It is important to consider that when families and professionals show interest in the same things that interest the person with autism, then the person with autism will be more open to communicating and seeking or responding to communication attempts. The resources page uh, at this of this presentation will house a copy of this presentation along with additional resources for autism. Uh, so at this point, then what questions do you have after receiving this training? Here's my contact information, heather.alger at louisville.edu. Well, thank you so much, Heather. Um, that was a great an informative um, presentation. Um, I love the idea of the photo album. Um, so I think there's many takeaways for everybody that attended today. Um, I know we're very short on time. I did want to just point out in the chat that I did put the evaluation link. Um, you do need to complete this and hit that you attended the um, autism training series provided by Aetna as it will prompt you to put your name and email in there so that you can get your CEU credit. Um, and there is also the link. Thank you for watching this video. Please take a moment to complete this short feedback form by scanning the QR code or typing the URL into your web browser. Thank you.